Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Hello everyone, wherever you are. It's so great to see so many folks here and joining our event. Um, we do have a, a chat going and we'd love it to, to find out where folks are. Where are you calling in from? So if anyone wants to put their location in the chat, that would be fantastic. I will put mine, it's in California. Where in we have lots of participants here. You're welcome to indicate where you are. Mexico City, fantastic. Dr. Norma, are you ready to get started? Oh, wow, look, hold on. India, Sinaloa, Santa Cruz. This is great. <laughs> Jamila Sealy is on a beach somewhere. Where is that? Is uh, Siancan the Biosphere Reserve in Quintana Roo, Mexico? Where? Where? <laughs> Siancan Biosphere Reserve oh, in Quintana Roo. Can yeah, Siancan, yeah. Cancun, okay. The Mexican okay. Caribbean. Okay, and I'm, uh, I'm uh, situated in uh, central New York State. Oh, great. Oh. I see we I have Arthur from Geneva, Switzerland, uh, Lord and Carolyn from uh, Louisville, Kentucky, Kentucky, lots of different locations here. This is fantastic. One else from New York. Norma, should we get started? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. okay. Feel well, free. Good morning. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Marisa uh, Lopez. Good morning, everyone. My name is Norma Munoz. I'm from Mexico. And on behalf of Dr. Ash Pachori, senior mentor of the pop movement, we want to say that for us it's a great honor and privilege to welcome you to this workshop on impact of climate change and COVID-19 in coastal areas. Within the framework of the global leadership in the 21st century event organized by United Nations Office at Geneva and the World Academy of Arts and Science. Thank you very much for your valuable participation and contribution with this meeting. In a very short words, welcome everyone. Thank you, Marisa. I give you the floor, please. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Norma. It's so great to see you. Um, and it's fun. Every, anyone who's just joining, please feel free to put your location in the chat. It's so fun to see where everybody is calling it in from. So we are so excited to be here. Uh, we only have an hour for this really important session and we have a lot to cover. So I wanted to quickly go through the agenda with, with everybody on this call. All the participants, thank you so much for calling in. Um, you are all very important in this session. This is a very interactive uh, conversation that we are gonna be having here and it's very important to, to the survival of our world, frankly. So thank you so much for being here. Uh, Dr. Norma, that was a fantastic introduction. It's great to have you. Um, we will very soon uh, be breaking out into breakout rooms for about 30 minutes. And so everybody here on this call is going to be part of one of three breakout rooms, and we're going to provide some instructions about that in just a minute. The three breakout rooms will be about, we will be discussing, uh, everyone will be discussing three different topics. So everyone needs to choose which topic they would like to participate in. The first topic is about youth leadership, uh, specifically, of course, uh, related to coastal areas um, and the impact of COVID-19 on these areas. Uh, we'll also be talking specifically about coastal communities. Um, so not specific to youth leadership, but co impacts of coastal communities and solutions there. And then the third breakout room will be on the blue economy and blue ecology. Then we have some great experts in each room. After the 30 minutes, uh, we're gonna jump back into the call and report back to the group um, about what we discussed. And then we're gonna have some final remarks. Um, each group is gonna have a facil two facilitators um, from the planning team as well as uh, note takers. So everyone's gonna be very well supported. So right now, We'd like to ask all the participants on the call to please um, indicate in your Zoom name which session you would like to participate in. So if you, uh, if you go to the Zoom, 
that you're in, in the plant panel, um, and you click on go participants. So you should be able to click on this, um, this icon here, find your name. So the example here is Anna Hanhausen. Um, and Anna, if I'm not saying any of this correctly, feel free to let me know. Um, click on the more button, click on rename. <clears throat> and then what we want you to do is when you're renaming, please add either which session you would like to participate in. So whether it's youth, um, coastal communities, you could just put coastal, or uh, the third is the blue economy. <clears throat> so you could put blue economy or just blue somewhere in your name to help the organizers know which of the three breakout rooms that you would like to participate in. If any of that is not clear, um, you're welcome to uh, put a message in the chat if you need any help with the instructions. Um, but otherwise, I'd let, it'd be great if everybody just goes ahead and makes that label now. Anna, do you have anything to add there? Was that set a no, direction? No, I think that was really clear. Yeah, thank okay, you. Okay, great. Um, well, I don't know about everybody else's experiences, but uh, I, in my group, uh, the half hour <laughs> flew by very, very quickly. So that was, um, it always sounds like a long time and then it is, <laughs> it just really isn't. So I'm going to, thank you everyone for participating. I am going to go ahead and just post, <clears throat> what we're going to do is take a few minutes and allow each of the groups to um, report back. So we will start with the youth leaders and I'm just going to share the questions that they were discussing and what the objective is. And then I would like to, uh, again, we're going to go through each of the groups, but I would like to ask the representative from the youth leaders uh, to go ahead and report back to this group about what you learned and what sort of, if you had a transformative action that you would like to share with the group. And Anna and Summer, you'll have to let us know who the, the reporter is. Hi, uh, this is Salomon from Mexico, I think. Uh, I'm gonna start and if, if someone else has something to say, they'll just jump in. Um, but I guess, um, you know, just to summarize what, on the, some topics that we touched during the conversation, uh, we, we, I think we uh, emphasized four points, four main points. Uh, the first one would, would be education. Uh, pretty much all of us talked about how important educating people in the coastal areas is, uh, just to make them understand that it's not only something we, wanna, we want to improve just because, but just all the benefits that we'll, uh, we'll attract to their community and society, you know, just like, uh, you know, well, getting involved into these um, environment and coastal problems. So the, the first one would be education, you know, working with schools, working with uh, universities, just with, or just with, you know, the government itself. Um, with that, the sec you know, we lead to the second point, which is uh, maybe possibly creating workshops or groups or classes in those schools and, and universities that will, you know, wake the, uh, uh, will make people curious, you know, and just how they can work and help uh, the environment. So universities and schools are very important places to start that conversation. Um, the third point we, we talked about was attracting, uh, working to attract investment and working with governments to change legislations. And it's, we know it's not easy, but I think that way we can have a big impact on, or, or a bigger impact than just uh, creating a small group. You know, attracting investment will, will help us uh, invest on technologies that really help the environment, you know, like new technologies that are expensive, but uh, that have a lot of benefits. And obviously changing legislation will, uh, could possibly help us protect the environment. And, I think the fourth, the fourth point we talked about, and I think for me is the most important one, is the, the, the leadership skills that are needed nowadays in the youth movement. Um, some, some of the ones we talked about was uh, fearless, you know, like the youth must be fearless uh, to, to transmit the message, you know, like 
uh, we know that we're in a we're in a point in time that we must take action right now. We cannot wait for for yeah. decades or years, you know. So in a way, we need to be able to communicate the message in an effective way, but be fearless at the same time. And the other ones would be uh, you, have, you have thirty more seconds. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. <laughs> yes, that's that's actually perfect. Uh, compassion and empathy to to just understand what the problem is. Uh, teamwork to to be able to work with people around the globe, you know, and mostly nowadays virtually, uh, people that know more than us. And the last one would be communication, just knowing how to express the message that we want to give to the world. That was beautiful. <laughs> I'm, I'm stuck at fearless. Uh, that was really, really amazing. Thank you so much for reporting back on that. And thank you so much for everyone in that group who gave that input. I, I wish we could continue to talk about that for, for much longer, but that was super helpful. We've documented it. I appreciate it. Um, we are gonna jump to the next group, but thank you so much. Really beautiful. Um, so we're gonna ask, um, and I, I don't know if I said this, but each group has about three minutes to report back uh, just because we're, we're short on time. But um, we are gonna ask uh, representatives from the coastal community groups um, so Norma, Dr. Norma and Vita, if you could, uh, whoever's reporting back from your group, if they could take about three minutes to let us know what the transformative action is that you recommend. <clears throat> Thank you, Marisa. Gitika is our uh, reporter today. Thank you, Gitika. Hello, everyone. I'm Gitika from Chennai, India, uh, and I live in a coastal area myself. So I, I thought I'll talk about coastal communities or I'll join that group. Um, I think uh, the, the most uh, common problem that coastal communities face uh, is the natural disaster which is happening because of climate change. And even now during this COVID situation, because uh, there are a lot of uh, people living in the coastal areas who depend on, on, the, on the jobs related to oceans like surfing, fishing, and, and, and so on. Um, and they don't have jobs right now because of COVID. So the uh, solutions that we came up uh, with are, uh, are at, like kind of two-phased. Uh, one is that we need to solve the problem that is at hand, like trying to find jobs or trying to provide food secu security and shelter security to the people who are affected. And this, they can do it by themselves. We don't uh, need leaders from outside alone. Uh, I think communities can act as uh, as, as leaders, like everyone in the community can act as leader. Everyone can help each other out and try to cope up with the situation. For example, if, if someone is running a hotel, that person can definitely still provide shelter to homeless people and, uh, and in turn, these homeless people could try to maintain the hotel. Since tourism is also affected, these hotels must anyways not be running. So this could be a good way to cope up and help each other out. Uh, and also like we should uh, educate these people to be uh, prepared for any disaster. And again, this is something that, that could be taught by people from, uh, from outside. But again, as a community, they have to take a stand for themselves and fight against any natural disaster that comes, comes to them. Uh, also, it, it, like internet is a good help right now. They can learn from other communities how they are sustaining and they can inculcate those uh, good, uh, good, good techniques and try to save themselves. And uh, another part of the solution is how to avoid these problems or how to reduce uh, these, these problems in the future. Uh, it could be done by adopting eco-friendly ways, like, uh, like a lot of these coastal areas are hot tourist spots. So maybe they can adopt uh, eco-friendly uh, techniques, uh, like uh, as basic as just avoiding plastic. And uh, this would also help spread awareness among the tourists who are coming there. And it will naturally just help them to maintain the, uh, the, the cleanliness of the coastal areas. And, uh, uh, and thank you. You have a couple. Do you mind taking 30 seconds to summarize? I apologize for cutting you yeah, off. Sure. But, yeah, sure. Uh, that, that should yeah. be good. That should be good. And mm -hmm. also we should um, also allow some time for these uh, regions to, uh, re uh, to recover the natural resources by themselves. I mean, we shouldn't just uh, avoid a couple of months uh, 
of tourism in these spaces so that the natural resources could just recover by themselves in that way we'll try to maintain a, a proper ecological balance and a good economy uh, in the long term i think that's what we discussed thank you so much that was an amazing summary and uh just having heard the report back from your session as well as the first session i'm thinking about what we talked in the blue economy session and there's some very interesting common themes that are being discussed in all of these sessions so this is really incredible to hear i'm sure everyone else is hearing it as well okay so from again, and we could continue this conversation for a very long time, but from the blue economy and blue ecology session, uh, we, it, we had an amazing conversation and I would like to ask Arthur to please report back um, in about three minutes to this group. Well, our focus again was on education because it was important that communities be empowered to understand their own sustainability and control their own actions at the local level. And this is an education that should run from your primary schools to children, if possible, go to, go to the beach, uh, see, learn about these things, all the way to the resource users, so that fishermen should learn sustainability practices. Uh, you know, other people who are using it should understand the sustainability. We also had a case where the government itself didn't know what a blue economy was about and sustainability. So we have to educate government as well. Uh, Ideally, you would want to train up some scientists, marine scientists in your local community who could actually be doing the research and the monitoring, reporting back regularly and keep the flow of information so that community can adjust its own behavior and its use of resources to keep them sustainable. Uh, we had an example in the Marshall Islands, but this is already, already being done. And, and therefore, all of these things are elements of empowering the community to take more responsibility to themselves and to be certain that they're really taking their whole community. We also saw the needs with, with sea level rise, communities have to learn how to retreat successfully. They can no longer plan to stay where they are. This is, we know this is coming, educating them to understand what to give up and how to adapt and how to make certain there's some solidarity as they go through that moving process. Uh, there are often deprived communities who don't have easy access. Education should allow them also to understand those resources and to be able to you know, see their need for them as not just the rich who live on the beaches who should be empowered in this way. Everybody in the community needs to be involved as part of also of justice, which is part of sustainability. So I think it's a quick summary of what was a very interesting reflection from a variety of people, you know, from, from islands and you know, Monterey and all over the world. Yes. Thank you so much, Arthur. There's so much to talk about and um, lack of equity and uh, access to actual experiencing the coast and the ocean did come up in our conversation and it would have been nice to have more time to sort of expound on that but i really appreciate everyone's feedback this is um i think we've come up with some really great information and i really appreciate the note takers and everyone who has participated in this um fantastic conversations and in a very short period of time i think we were able to really surface some very poignant and very important points. And I, I hope everybody actually learned a lot during this session. Um, so we, we do, I would like to go ahead and close up uh, so quickly. And I wanted to ask uh, the, the fantastic Dr. Ash Pachori to please uh, go ahead and make some closing remarks in the last few minutes. And uh, before you do so, everyone, please note that we are gonna be uh, Komal, could you please uh, post, we have a, some follow-up information that we'll post in the chat as well. So with that, I'd like to hand over the closing to you, Ash. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I do want to uh, acknowledge that uh, in a very short period of time, some very uh, substantive outputs, uh, thoughts, and, and ideas were generated. Um, and, and, and taking those forward, I would like to say that one of the things with the POP movement, where POP stands for Protect Our Planet, and also its sister organization, which is the World Sustainable Development Forum, also called the WSDF, will drop links to both organizations' websites in the chat here. Uh, we, we are focused on uh, a couple of things that I think actually align very closely with the issues that were emerged from all three groups and particularly the important action and solutions. One is that uh, we're focused on the science and certainly on generating important discussion, deliberation and dialogue, but following it up with action. And uh, both organizations, one is a grassroots uh, 
youth-led organization where young people take action to address the issue um, of, of uh, marine conservation and, and, and the ocean, but also other issues related to protecting our planet. And the other organization, which is the World Sustainable Development Forum, is the flip side of that, of that coin where we uh, work with policy uh, decisions and also with leaders from across different stakeholder fields so that we can really affect change across every sphere uh, of society. And so young people being leaders of today and tomorrow are very important constituent for the World Sustainable Development Forum as well. And I'd like to say we, in fact, our tagline for the pop movement is youth inspired by knowledge because we are founded on the science of climate change. And therefore education is a critical component of this. And I'd like to say that one of the uh, follow-ups, very st strong uh, and tangible follow-ups that we foresee from this discussion, in addition to additional discussions and con continued collaboration, is educational programs. And we're hoping to be able to address issues where we engage youth, uh, but also very importantly, community-led responses to address the issue of um, you know, the oceans and the blue economy and blue ecology. I will request someone also, if you may just drop the link to the world, uh, to the Pop Ocean Initiative within the chat over here, I'd request you to please uh, visit that page. There's a link where, where you can sign up. Uh, and we would love to be able to continue conversations with you, but also follow up on training advocacy and the educational components we were talking about here, because the intention is to roll out strong educational uh, programs to be able to build capacities and follow those up with action. And most importantly, to have action led by and for communities. And I know we have a lot of people who are leaders here right now and you've shared tremendous insight, I know in a very short period of time, but we see this as the start of something much bigger. So we warmly welcome you to the POP movement and greatly look forward to staying in touch. If you don't already have your contacts, I request you to please share them and do use the link to, to, to sign up if you uh, would please and we'd love an opportunity to continue talking to you. We do work with youth uh, and every stakeholder, researchers, um, and global leaders at, in different spheres in order to be able to affect the change. So thank you very much once again. And with that, I'd like to hand back to Marissa. Uh, many thanks to all of you. Thank you, Ash. Uh, we really appreciate everybody being here and your participation. And like I said, if you want to continue these conversations, we'd like to continue with them with you. Please do check out our website. Um, and come join us with the Pop Ocean Initiative. It's grassroots and everybody's frankly welcome. This is everybody's world. All of you are just as important as everyone else. We all live here and we all have the responsibility right now <laughs> to be fearless as the youth have reminded us and to step into leadership in this very moment that we're in. So we need to face the world where it's at and uh, figure out how to move forward and do it now. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very much to the, the Voss organizers for having us. We really appreciate this fantastic opportunity to have these wonderful conversations. So thank you all. Thank you. Many thanks. Thank you, Marissa. Thank, thank you, you thank Dr. Rush. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your help and support. Yes. And, and great.